It's Erin from the Little Urban Farm. I thought we'd talk about something a little bit different today. Um, instead of going into the gardens, because not a whole lot has changed there, honestly, um, other than my cucumbers are slowly dying. <laughs> um, but I, I don't talk much about herbs. And so a friend of mine was asking about lemon balm. And that's what this is behind me. This, all of this here is lemon balm. Um, this in front of it is mugwort in a container. But all this here, it looks very, very much like mint. It's got a scalloped leaf. If you smell it, it has almost like a lemony kind of a pledge smell. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but I always thought pledge smelled good. Um, it's a wonderful, wonderful herb. Here you can get a little bit of a closer look at it. What's distinctive about lemon balm versus mint is that it's got the scalloping on it. And then the smell, of course. The smell is much more lemony versus minty. But here's a closer look at the, the square style of the stem in that mint family. All of your mints will probably have that same structure. So the way that you tell them apart is usually by their leaf characteristics and by their smell. Really easy to grow. A lot of people confuse this with bee balm. Bee balm and lemon balm are not the same thing. Uh, bee balm is a little bit different. It grows prolifically. You can see here, this was a tiny little bunch that someone gave me and it has gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you read how to care for it, everyone says full sun. Mm -mm. Not in South Carolina, <laughs> not where we have had very little rain and we get such harsh sun and heat. I have found that my mint and my lemon balm both grow much, much better when they've got a little bit of reprieve from the sun. So I have this one against the fence. This is doing wonderful. It doesn't get scorched. Um, if you put this in full sun or if you put it in a pot where it dries out really fast in the full sun, it's going to shrivel up and die. In fact, I had one on my deck that already has died. <laughs> so um, I have another bunch over here. Let's go. Let's go look at this one. So this is the batch of lemon balm that I brought from my old house. This is over here in what I call my, my tea garden with the mints. Um, let me see if you can, these aren't very big, but uh, if you pick the mint, you know, depending on what variety it is, you'll be able to tell the difference and you'll be able to pick up on that, that lemony smell. But this one is a little bit smaller than the one down there. I don't know why. I think this one is slightly shaded more. I'm okay with that because that one is kind of growing out of control where this one is staying kind of localized. There is one other location that I am growing lemon balm and it's in this window box here. Now you can see this looks a little bit different. I don't know if that's just because it's in this box and it's on a smaller scale, but it's turning kind of purple. Leaves are a little bit smaller because it's in this box. But the reason I have this over here near my garden, lemon balm is great for deterring pests. So around my gardens, I've placed a lot of herbs. I have basil. Um, in fact, you can see the basil through here. <laughs> um, but lemon balm is another one. It's supposed to repel mosquitoes. You could crush the leaves and rub it on your skin. I recently just learned that it is supposed to be wonderful for bee stings. So if you chew this up and make a spit poultice, you can put it on the bee sting and it's supposed to help relieve the symptoms of that. This wonderful, wonderful herb is very good for stress and anxiety. The best way to use it is in a tea. Uh, I just take and I steep the leaves. You can dry them or you can use them just like this. Take a handful of them, put them in your teacup cup of hot water let it steep for a couple minutes it's delicious it's absolutely delicious you can also put it in a bath um, you could dry it so that you can save some for various things teas incense um, you could also make like a sachet that goes in the tub with it if you wanted to it can be used for desserts if you use it fresh it's got that little lemony flavor adds a nice little touch to say fruit salad or another type of dessert that, that that might fit. So it's just wonderful. And today I thought I would come out and harvest some of it. The best time to harvest it 
is before it goes to flower. So we are now, we're August 1st right now. I'm not exactly sure. I tried looking up a few different sources. I'm assuming it's going to flower soon because it's very, very large. Um, so I think now is probably a perfect time to harvest some of this. If not, it may depend on the area that you're in. If you're up north, you might want to wait a little bit longer. But the oils are more concentrated the more mature that the plant is. Typically you want to harvest it more in the morning. That's when the plant is a little bit more vibrant, has a little bit more moisture in it. So you want to be very careful that you probably don't want to cut it in the high heat of the day. You also might damage the rest of the plant depending on what kind of stress it puts it under. So you can see here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and I'm just going to cut some bunches and we're going to take it inside, we're going to wash it and we're going to hang it to dry. So I am going to come right in here, find some really good stems and I'm going to clip them down more toward the base. I want these in large bunches. Now, you don't want to pick all of your lemon balm because lemon balm, if you want it to keep producing, it needs to go to seed, similar to chamomile. So you don't want to take all of it. Think of this like a, a pruning. So what we're going to do with this, I'm going to take this inside, I'm going to submerge it underneath some water. Now the reason I'm doing that is to wash off any dirt, wash off any bugs. Um, I usually let it sit in the sink overnight and then after that happens and I'm sure that there's no bugs on it, I tie some string around the bunch and I hang it up and you just let it dry. It should be dry in hmm, about a week I think. So it shouldn't take very long to, to happen at all. And um, that's all you do. Um, then take the dried herb and you store it and you can use the dried herb for tea um, and anything else that you want. And it's quite fabulous. I love the way it smells. I hope that you'll grow some lemon balm and see how wonderful it can be in your life.